Today I'm going to discuss about this article that is based on the efficacy and safety of insulin decrodec and flexible dosing regimen versus insulin glargine in patients with diabetes for a 26-week randomized treat-to-target trial with 26 weeks extension. A brief overview of this article is that this study was investigated to see the efficacy and safety of insulin decrodec taken once daily with a variation in timing of dose day to day. It was a 26 week open label treat to target non inferiority trial compared of insulin decrodec forced flexible with insulin decrodec or insulin glargine given at the same time daily. In the 26 extension, all insulin decrodec subjects were transferred to a free flexible regimen which allowed any time of day dosing. And it was also compared with subject continue on insulin glargine. After 26 weeks of treatment, the mean glycosylate hemoglobin was reduced with insulin decrodate force flex by negative 40%. The insulin decrodate that was not force flex was reduced by 41% and their glargonine insulin was reduced by negative 58%. The fasted plasma glucose reduction were similar with the decrodec force flex and the insulin glargonine, but greater with the insulin decrodec than the insulin force flex. At week 52, the free flex subject has similar glycosylate hemoglobin, but greater faster plasma glucose reduction than the insulin glargine subjects. The insulin decrodec can be administered um, once daily, any time of the day, with the injection time period that vary without comparison of the glycemic control or safety versus same time daily as the insulin decrodec or the insulin glargine. This may improve the basal insulin adherence by allowing injection time adjustment according to individual needs. For the introduction, the insulin actin insulin analog has been developed to cover the basal requirements for patients with type 1 diabetes, but current treatment option generally requires the same time daily um, dose administered to ensure the optimal glycemic control. Many patients with diabetes reported missing numerous injections, resulting in significant association between self-reported non-compliance and higher glycosylate hemoglobin levels. Insulin Decrodec is a basal insulin in development of treatment for type 1 diabetes as well as type 2 diabetes. It has an ultra-log duration action and a long variability, which produces a consistent glucose lowering activity profile at steady state. The actual half-life for insulin decrodec is roughly 25 hours, which is twice of insulin glargine. Also, the duration of action for insulin decrodec is roughly 42 hours. The aim of this study was to investigate whether the greater flexibility of basal insulin injection timing could be achieved by insulin decrodec in patient with type 1 diabetes without compromising efficacy and safety. Also, the design was to test the hypothesis of the flexible dose for insulin decadec and how it could provide glycemic control comparable with conventional basal insulin regimen. The research design method was a 26 to 26 week randomized control, open label, multinational parallel design, treat-to-target, non-inferiority trial comparing with the efficacy and the safety of Decrodec and Glargine. The administrative dose was insulin aspart at mealtime. The main study compared the insulin Decrodec in forced flexible regimen with insulin Decrodec and insulin Glargine administered at the same time daily. To be eligible for this trial, you must be 18 years and older, you must have type 1 diabetes and be on the basal therapy with an A1C level of 
or lower. Your body mass index must also be 35 kilograms per meter squared. Eligible patients were randomized by a one by one by one using a central interactive voice web response system to receive the insulin decrodec or the insulin guardianine in combination with the mealtime insulin aspart. The child produced a maxin that was maintained for titration, surveillance, monitoring, and statistically and medically personnel until the data was locked for analyzing. Eligible participants were switched to once daily insulin degradec and insulin guardianine with mealtime insulin aspart at a randomized for the first week. Its previous basal insulin was dose once daily, initial dose was transferred one to one for insulin decrodec and insulin guardianine. Its previous basal insulin was dosed more than once daily. Total daily basal dose was calculated and transferred for one to one for insulin decrodec with insulin reduction considered by the investigator judgment. The trial was approximately 56 weeks, including once screening week, two 26 weeks treatment trial, and two seven days to 12 days follow-up washout period. The main period compared the insulin decrodec force flex administered on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. On Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, and Sundays evenings, it was a fixed interval with a minimum of eight and a maximum of 40 hours between injection. The treat to target approach mainly is used to optimize glycemic control and obtain its target. The primary endpoint was changed in A1C levels for basal after 26 weeks. After efficacy assessment, including the laboratory measurement, they also used the fasten plasma glucose and also used self-measured plasma glucose levels to also look at the secondary endpoint of the study. The primary objective was to confirm that non-inferiority of insulin decrodec force flex to insulin glycogeny in the A1C level changes from the baseline to week 26. The non-inferiority was confirmed if the upper limit of the second side 95% covenance interval for the treatment difference for mean change of the A1C as recommended by the regulatory guidelines. Statistically, the analysis of the efficacy and endpoint, the hyperglycemia and the body weight include all randomized participants following the intention to treat principle, all after the safety endpoint was evaluated in participant exposed to treatment. From the result, they used 493 participants 490 of them received the trial drug, and mostly 84% received the insulin decrodec force fix uh, regimen, 84.2% received the insulin decrodec, and 92.7% received the insulin glargenine, completed with the mean trial. The percentage of participants that have withdrawn from the trial from the insulin decrodec force flex was roughly 15.9%. For the insulin decrodec, it was roughly 15.8% group, and for the insulin glargenine, it was 7.3%. The withdrawal was related to the A1C level, as well as the hypoglycemic um, episodes. The baseline was characterized as a moderate glycemic control for the A1C at 7.7% for type 1 diabetes population. The primary objective of this trial was to meet because of the insulin decrodec force flex was shown to be non-inferior to the insulin glargenine in reducing the A1C levels. There was no difference in observed mean decrease for the A1C levels from baseline to week 26 between 
Insulin Decker Deck and Force Flex and Insulin Decker Deck. The mean basal dose increased slightly between week 0 to week 26 with Insulin Decker Deck, Force Flex, and Insulin Glargeny. However, the basal dose remained stable with Insulin Decker Deck week 0 to 26 and the Insulin Decker Deck, Free Flex, and Insulin De um, sorry, insulin glargine group for week 26 to week 52 remained the same. At week 26, the hypoglycemic, the hypoglycemic rate was significantly lower in Decker-Deck Force Flex than insulin glargine. It confirmed the hypoglycemic rate was generally lower in insulin Decker-Deck Force Flex than insulin glargine and insulin Decker-Deck regardless of the day of the week. No significant difference in overall confirmation of the hypoglycemia were seen at week 52 between the flex and insulin glargine. However, the adverse effects was mild and moderate and considered unrelated to the basal insulin, with no treatment-specific pattern observed. The so rejection site reaction was low over 52 weeks. The severe adverse effect reported for insulin decker deck was 5.5% for this force flex. For regular insulin decker deck, it was 4.2% for severe adverse effects. And for insulin glargine, it was 5%. Overall, the severe side effects were distributed similarly among groups. Few were considered related to the trial product and most frequently reported severe effect was related to hypoglycemia. There was one death by an unsumed intentional insulin overdose occurring at the Decadec treatment for female participant. Insulin Decadec duration of action exceed 42 hours, provide a full 24 hours basal insulin coverage and offering consistent glucose lowering effects. Thus, potentially allow administration with a border dose window. In this present study, it was aimed to evaluate whether insulin decker deck dose and flexible regimen would be safe and effective for patients in type 1 diabetes. Overall, the 26 weeks of force flex regimen have proved effective. However, there were some limitations in the studies, such as small population size, as compared to previous insulin decker deck studies, also a relatively short time frame of force flex regimen and different recommendation for transferring subject on more than once daily basal insulin to insulin decker deck and insulin glargine at the study of start. More insulin decker deck and insulin glargine treated participants withdrew from the trial during the main period, the rate of withdrawal was related to the dem demand and nature of the study. I would like to acknowledge this research by Nova Nordics and also by many of the facilities that participated in this trial. Thank you.